Hey guys, thanks for tuning in this video. I really do appreciate it. If you're interested in watching content based on all things real estate, this channel is definitely for you. Let's get to the video. All right guys, so I figured it'd be an interesting video to talk about my first transaction. Quick disclaimer, I actually did help two rental clients um, with buying places of rent um, before the transaction I'm gonna talk about. But in regards to closings, like settlements, whether we're talking about buyers or sellers, this is my first actual transaction. So I tried to start getting into the business in March when I went through schooling. Um, I wasn't able to get my license because of the pandemic till June. My license went active June 25th, um, and that's when my real estate career began. It was a Thursday, um, and I actually had a client, a buyer, that we started looking at houses um, that Saturday. Um, we started looking at houses really aggressively. They needed to move out fairly quickly. Um, and we actually won a contract twice, um, but that transaction fell apart. Um, it was a pretty tough time for me as a new realtor. I was really motivated and to lose that transaction um, in my first month. And that relationship, frankly, um, was really tough. And I will be doing a video shortly on that. What happened was I had all my marbles in one client and it was a learning experience for me that I had to learn how to all constantly be selling, constantly be doing lead generation. So August was pretty dead for me. At the end of the month, I really came back and I really you know, decided that if I'm gonna do this, I gotta go full heartedly. Um, so I tried several different uh, ways of lead generation. In the beginning of September, I decided to start pursuing for sale by owner leads. And what I would do is I would go on Zillow, find the numbers, call them, text them, stay in the email, I would email them. And I was doing this every day. I was sending out letters to them. I was knocking on doors. When you're pursuing for sub owners, you'll get a lot of no's. I do think they're a good lead source because these are people that are very avid that they want to sell, um, but they just want to or they believe that they can sell themselves. In this market, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Um, I'm not knocking anybody that wants to sell their house themselves, um, but I was looking to find the people that did need help selling. So as a realtor, you're definitely going to get accustomed to no's, a lot of no's, very few yeses. But your goal is to find the yeses, goal is to find the people that need your help, that you can bring them value, and not get frustrated with the people that are already helped and they're already fine where they are. In the beginning of September, I actually got a response from a sale by owner who said that they, the house I was inquiring about, they actually already wanted a contract, but they had another property coming on the market that they may need help with. Um, she told me I could meet with her, I did. So when I pulled up, I realized that this was an investor property, that this was gonna be a flip. Um, so there was nothing in it, no appliances, no paint, no drywall. They were finishing up, they already gutted it, they did the electrical work and all the plumbing, but they were putting it together and this was gonna be a flip. For a new agent who had never listed anything yet, this was kind of like, I felt like a tough, you know, uh, sell, you know, for me, because I was, you know, looking for something ready to sell and I was working with an investor for my first client. Um, but anyway, I was really motivated and I thought I could help. So she asked me about my experience and I was very frank that I was a newer agent. Some people are kind of nervous to have this discussion, but I've never been really scared of sales. I have a background in sales. And I knew it would come up eventually. So I was prepared and I told her, you know, even though I'm a newer agent, my office has sold a bunch of homes in this area and in the state. Um, I also told her I had a team uh, around me, my mentor, my manager, um, just other experienced agents, and that she would be kind of getting more than one agent in this experience that she worked with me because my mentor would be involved. But it went really well. Um, she told me she would probably be interviewing other people so she would get back to me, but she didn't know if my experience was good enough for her to list it with me. This was the first week of September, and I didn't get discouraged I didn't get the listing. I thought it was a great experience because I met with an investor, which was an experience I didn't think I would have anytime soon. I had a good listing appointment, a legit listing appointment. Um, and I just thought it was a great learning experience. I followed up with her every week um, until, and, and I think about October, she finally said, okay, I would work with you, but for 4%, which I could not do. I told her, look, listen, I understand, you know, you want to save money, you're an investor, you want to make as much money as possible. I can't do 4%, um, but I guarantee you when you list with me, the money you'll make and experience and how easy it is, it will be well worth it, the more commission. Um, and she she understood that. She said she had to get back to me. She understood that I, I, I couldn't go that low. Ended up committing to it, which was great. And I was super excited, you know. And it was it was about a month out, and we were going to list it in uh, the end of, no of November. Um, 
Um, so like I said, you guys don't, you know, people don't talk about this, but sometimes you don't get a listing right at the moment. Sometimes you just gotta constantly follow up. And as a newer agent, you have to show that hustle, the drive, the communication skills. Um, so I was dropping off information about the neighborhood. I was there every other week and she would show me the progress of the property. So I was involved and I would tell her how the market was adjusting each couple of weeks, what was selling, some new comps every once in a while. I really worked for this this listing and I built a relationship from first week of September to end of November. So when I got the listing sign, it was awesome. Come to find out the previous property that I inquired about, um, actually the deal fell apart and she needed the proceeds from that that uh, house to finish up the remaining uh, adjustments and repairs to this listing. And she said, unfortunately I can't do it, but I will give you that listing to sell it really quick if you can. And once that one is done, then you can list this one. So there was kind of like a beauty and kind of frustration in this. One, I was frustrated because the listing we're talking about was gonna be a $264,000 listing, which was a pretty good commission check seeing it, this was about four or five months in, I really didn't need it. Two, I worked really hard for, for this relationship and to it to not be able to list in like a week or two because another deal fell apart was kind of frustrating. But the beauty of it was that the listing that I previously acquired, inquired about in the first week of September, I was going to get. It was a smaller listing. Um, it was literally like a knockdown house. You were buying a house for the land. Um, but I was just so happy to help somebody that needed help. It wasn't someone, and I thought that I could help. Also, it would turn into from one deal to two deals, um, which is good one for my record to show um, that I've sold two properties in that year, um, to two different commission checks, two different times to, to build this relationship, improve myself with this investor. So it was a, a, a positive side and kind of a negative side too. Now I knew this property might be tough because like I said, it was a knockdown. Those are not gonna be, uh, it didn't have to be a knockdown, but it had foundation issues. Like it was just gonna be um, a complete gut. Like you had to do the foundation, everything. So it would, probably was gonna be a knockdown if whoever bought it. But I was determined to build this relationship and prove myself. So I took the listing as my first listing. Um, and if I sold that one, I will also get to prove myself to list this other home that I was about to sell um, in about whenever that one closed. So we got multiple offers, but ended up accepting an offer for a little over 3K over asking. Um, it was a cash deal, quick close, um, no contingencies. And we closed 30 days afterwards, January 9th, or it was January 8th. But that was my first official closing. It was an investor knockdown. So that's my first deal. It truly did transform my business and it allowed me to build a relationship with a good investor. Um, I hope this story was good and motivating for some people. Everybody talks about their crazy first deals, um, all the deals they have. Um, so I really wanted to share mine and show you know what you know what it might take to get your first listing um, or your first transaction. Um, but I truly will always remember that first transaction um, as my career goes on. If you like this video, please comment and like below. I'm really looking for feedback to make my videos better and entertaining and informative. Also subscribe, I'm really trying to build this network and this uh, just following of people interested in all things real estate. So I really appreciate anybody that subscribes to it. I promise you these videos will get better. Until next time, have a good one.